Hello everyone, Mucklug Douglas Bartholomew Original Desquire the Fourth here, or as the YouTube subtitles like to call me, Muckalug Begler Spot on the Original Desquire are the Fourth. <laughs> and today we're going to cover guilds. How to make a guild, join a guild, build a guild hall, run guild missions, get rewards, and help your guild with construction. Timestamps can be found in the description. What is a guild exactly? A guild is a community of people that all share a chat channel and a guild hall. Beyond that, it will vary depending on the guild. Some will primarily raid, others world v world, others no one talks at all, and they all just use the guild for its in-game benefits. In Guild Wars 2, you can be in up to five guilds. You can accept guild invitations, create guilds, or change which guild you are representing here in the guild panel, located near the top left by your mail. Guilds will have certain passive benefits based on the upgrades they have completed. You only receive the passive benefits from the guild you are currently representing. EU and NA players can be in the same guild, they just can't see one another in person. But they can all help donate to the NPCs to level the guild up together and all enjoy the benefits. Creating a guild. How to create a guild. This part is easy. Simply open up the guild panel and click create guild right here. Pick a name and a tag. The tag can be taken, so for example, all of my guilds have mm as the tag. Although each guild caps at 500 members, it's really one big happy family. Aww. After that, you pay a modest fee and can start inviting people. Eventually it will tell you that you have hit the maximum number of people. Every time that happens, talk to this person, Lion's Arch, pay a few coins, and your cap increases to a maximum of 500 per guild. While talking to this NPC, you can also edit your guild's emblem, which will be on certain equipment and banners. Now that we have a guild, we can run a guild mission. A guild mission is like a quest that gives the guild, as well as the participants in the mission, rewards. Make sure you are representing the guild with the checkbox and go to the missions tab. For the first week, you can't pick what missions you get, but you can click the gear at the top to choose what type you want for the future. PvE, PvP, World v World, or No Preference, which increases the reward slightly. Most starter guilds will find PvE the easiest, but do what you wish. Our new guild has a Run a Race option, and we can see up here it rewards 440 favor. We can also see our guild has zero favor. Favor is used to build upgrades in the guild hall. We need some of that to get started. I used the slash wiki command on Bear Lope to find out where it is located. We went there and did the event. A quick note on PvP events. If you get a guild mission that says in a guild team, you need to go to the teams tab on the left, make a group there that matches your current group for it to be a guild team. If you don't do that, your PvP games won't count for your mission. Okay, so we've done a mission together, we've gotten our rewards, money, items, and guild commendations, more on these later, and the guild got favor. If you see this golden shield, then the guild has already gotten that reward for the week, but the treasure chest signifies your personal reward. Another group could do the race if they wished for the commendations, but they wouldn't get the guild any more favor because the gold shield is already checked off for that mission for the week. So we have some guild favor. Let's get a guild haul. Now this step requires 100 gold, so if you need to, have your friends pool resources for this. In Lion's Arch, we need to enter the Guild Initiative Headquarters next to the Guild Bluff Waypoint. Inside the building on the left are three Guild Hall Explorers. Each one represents a different Guild Hall. Two are in Heart of Thorns, which is usable by free-to-play players, and one is in Path of Fire, which is not completely usable by free-to-play players, but is arguably more lucrative as you have a chance to mine Obsidian there when you are mining the Synthesizers. Talk to each NPC, and if you wish to, click the Can you tell me what this place looks like? And you can watch a cinematic about the location in question. Lost Precipice and Gilded Hollow are in Heart of Thorns. Windswept Haven is the Path of Fire one. Once you pick one, click the Sounds Great, My Guild Wants It button, follow the prompts to spend some of the favor that you just earned along with 100 gold and your mission has begun. Follow the directions the NPC gave you. In our example of Windswept Haven, we were told to go to the northwest area of Domain of Vappy where we found a portal to the Guildhall. Zoning in ask which guild you want to go in as if you're a member of more than one, select the appropriate guild and enter. A note here, the difficulty scaling of this mission is insane. We failed this with knowledgeable people three times before we reduced the group size down to nine people. That made it so we had to fight one boss instead of four. I recommend you do not bring more than nine people because of the scaling. Inside, follow the story, kill the bad guys, listen to the guide's instructions, and claim this place as your own. It will get cleaned up a bit, and you now have some NPCs to work with to get started. 
Among your starting guild's NPCs, you will see a Commendation Trader, which is one of many NPCs your guild hall will get that allows you to spend guild commendations earned from missions. A Decoration Merchant, who will allow you to turn in trophies from certain bosses in game for decorations in the guild hall. An Initiative Notary, which allows you to buy some generalized guild upgrades, such as a Basic Merchant, Repair Anvil, and some other items. A Tavern Proprietor, this is one of many NPCs that will build structures for your hall. You can see for this this starting building, we need to donate these items. To donate, go to the Donations tab, and you can drag items from the left to the right side. It is worth noting, you can only donate stuff the guild needs for construction. You cannot accidentally give stuff the guild doesn't need. You can mouse over an item to see exactly what guild hall upgrades are currently available that need this particular ingredient. Essentially, you run missions for favor. Spend favor plus donated materials on constructions. Constructions give the guild experience. Experience levels up the guild. Leveling up gives you more construction options. After a couple of levels of the guild, you will be able to build a guild mine. The mine is very straightforward. It generates Ethereum. At first, it makes one per minute, but as you level the mine up, it will generate it more quickly. It is essentially a time gate. If you had limitless gold and resources, you still couldn't level a guild up in a day to maximum because of Ethereum. Every few guild levels, you will unlock a new NPC that gives access to additional building. Let's meet them all. As mentioned before, the mine will generate Ethereum, used in making other buildings. The bar offers numerous buffs once fully upgraded, including boost to crafting, map bonus rate increase, gathering boost, karma boost, magic find, XP gain, PvP Reward Track, World v. World XP Gain, and World v. World Reward Track Gain. The buff you choose is permanent until you come and pick up another one. Make sure to get a buff on all of your characters. The sound technician allows you to set the music playing in the guild hall. He's a jukebox. The workshop proprietor controls the synthesizers. These generate free resources every day. If you are in two or more guilds that are different levels, they will not share cooldowns on synthesizers. I mine out three guilds synths at the beginning of every stream for those easy resources and gold. Near the workshop is the scribing station. Scribing is a unique profession that you cannot level in Lion's Arch or other standard towns. It makes schematics of siege equipment for World vs. World, decorations for the guild, and banners. The assembly device lets you turn freshly made schematics into battle-ready schematics that automatically go in the guild bank and can be retrieved by anyone with the proper permissions at any time. The arena proprietor builds an arena in your guild hall, allowing you to play around in PvP versus other guildmates. Note, the guild hall uses PvE class balancing, so it is not quite the same as PvP class balance at this time also unlocks other benefits related to PvP. The War Room Proprietor unlocks upgrades pertaining to World vs. World. These are huge. They unlock Siege Equipment, the ability to claim larger structures after capturing them, and much, much more. The effect that these upgrades have on World v. World is massive compared to the effects the PvP upgrades have on PvP. Market Proprietor adds many merchants over time to your guild hall, including guild weapons, pets, and more, and giving you more ways to spend your commendations. The Guild Bank NPC allows access to the guild stash and treasure trove. They really aren't that different, but you can give them different permissions. Example, you could make it so that members can use the stash freely, but only officers can use the trove, etc. You can also see the log of the guild bank if any fishy business happens. The Guild Teleporter, once unlocked, allows you to faster travel to certain guild missions. Any mission that isn't hunt down something that is hidden from you, you could reach quickly by opening the teleporter and having everybody step through. This means if you're doing guild missions, you can just ask your guildies to meet in the guild hall and use that as a starting point. Eventually, as your guild hall reaches its full potential, you can unlock more space in your guild hall, which includes a jumping puzzle or mount race depending on the hall you chose. Let's go back to the guild panel and look at the options here. You can choose a message of the day here. On the guild roster tab, you can see who's online and information about them. You can also sort by last online to remove inactive players if necessary. We already discussed the missions and the teams tabs. The storage tab lets you store consumables such as food platters, world v world items, decorations, and arena obstacles for the PvP area. 
If you wish to decorate, double click on an item to open the decorations kit and you can get started. Removing a decoration will put it back in your storage. In the guild history, you can see, well, the history yeah. of the guild if you need to find anything. And finally, under ranks, you can set permissions. I advise all new guilds take away other people's permission to remove money from the guild's stash, or else you'll be in trouble when the peasants revolt. And that about covers it. Remember, two of the biggest benefits for the average player in a guild are the synthesizers, which is daily free stuff, and the bar buffs. Make sure you are using these. If you want to help your guild grow, you can donate needed materials to any of the NPCs with the Donations tab on the side, or you can run guild missions to earn the guild favor. I get asked often, how do I help grow the guild and other similar questions, and I am glad to finally have this project complete so I can show players with a visual aid on how it's done. If you enjoyed this video, please consider leaving a like for the YouTube algorithm, comment if you have any questions for me or additional input, and subscribe if you would like to see more content. A special thank you to my newest Patreon supporters who helped make this possible. If you have any questions, you can leave a comment for me below the video, mail me in-game at muckluck.9082, or ask me live any evening on Twitch after 9pm Eastern Time. Click the follow button there to be notified when I go live. That's it for today. Happy building!